It's hard to believe that only a few generations ago, Switzerland was so poor that many rushed to leave the country. They sought better lives and opportunities in France, the United States, Argentina and even distant Australia. That's changed. It's now home to global companies, international organisations and a myriad of small and medium enterprises that deliver anything from bread to robots. How does Switzerland's history affect its present? What does the work landscape, along with wages, benefits and the workforce, look like now? And how is Switzerland future-proofing what's to come? Long gone are the days when everyone was a farmer, living off the green, rich alpine pastures. With industrialization in the early 19th century came the first spinning machines, and St. Gallen became a front-runner in the textile industry. Some decades later, the chemical industry started to take off. New factories require power. Power came from steam. This boosted turbine production and the wider machine industry. These new businesses needed capital, and from the mid-19th century, the finance sector emerged. Switzerland became a centre for banking. Despite the emerging industries, 19th century Switzerland could not provide work for everyone. Countless Swiss emigrated from poor mountain regions to other European countries and beyond. This only started to change after World War II, which Switzerland survived relatively unscathed as a neutral country. Due to its neutrality, Switzerland has not suffered the economic devastation of warfare for the past 150 years. The country has a strong economy, low inflation, low national debt and a low unemployment rate. But the strength of the Swiss franc, which once symbolised the stability of the economy, has become its Achilles heel. The stronger the franc against the euro, the less competitive the Swiss export industry is. This can lead to job losses. The Swiss National Bank has fought to prevent a surge in the franc's value during the pandemic. It's been said that what's behind Swiss wealth is its ability to innovate, taking raw products and turning them into something valuable. This includes everything from luxury chocolates and watches to sophisticated new drugs. The Swiss have a reputation for calm efficiency and getting things done. Most of the work is done by small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, with less than 250 employees. They make up over 99% of the companies and create two-thirds of the jobs in Switzerland. In 2017, they employed more than 3 million people out of a total workforce of 5 million. In the Global Entrepreneurship and Development Index, GEDI 2018, Switzerland ranked second behind the US. Switzerland is also home to many global companies and international organisations. They account for 5% of all registered companies. 20 years ago, Switzerland was the top choice for 50% of multinational companies that chose Europe for their headquarters. More recently, the country has been losing ground to other locations in Europe and abroad. In May 2019, Swiss voters accepted a reform of corporate tax rules, so multinational companies would no longer be given special treatment. In the future, it's thought that the cost of office space and access to high-tech facilities will play a greater role in companies' decisions to move to Switzerland. People are often tempted by high wages to come and work here. The average wage for a full-time job is 6,500 francs per month. The top 10% of earners make on average 11,400 francs. Generally, People working in information services, finances and pharmaceuticals make a lot more money than those in the clothing or gastronomy sector. There are also regional pay differences. People in the southern canton of Ticino earn less on average than people in and around Zurich. But the cost of living in Switzerland is high. Single people who live on less than 2,259 francs a month or a family of four earning below 3,990 francs a month 
are considered poor. An employee may work up to 50 hours per week and everyone gets at least four weeks of holiday per year. Additionally, there are nine days of public holidays. Mothers get 14 weeks of maternity leave. In 2020, the Swiss voted to give fathers a statutory two weeks of paternity leave. In 2019, Switzerland's unemployment rate amounted to around 4.58%. But unemployment rose in 2020 due to the pandemic. In order to avoid mass layoffs during the pandemic, Swiss companies resorted to short time working. A system was already in place, allowing companies to temporarily reduce the working hours of its staff, who then receive a lower salary, supplemented by unemployment insurance. The aim is to safeguard jobs. In Switzerland, all employees are covered by unemployment insurance. When people lose their jobs, they can generally claim 70 to 80% of their original salaries for a limited period. The insurance also pays for reintegration measures, such as training. Switzerland is still a male-dominated working world. 40% of the working population are part-timers, and three out of four of these are women. Women are paid less, 12% less on average than men, and find it more difficult to pursue a career. The Federal Equality Office says 40% of wage differences can't be explained by variables such as professional qualifications. A new law requires companies with at least 100 employees to report on gender pay gaps. It's part of a government drive to reduce inequalities. Foreigners make up a third of the working population, so they are vital for the Swiss economy. The labour market is partly governed by bilateral agreements signed between Switzerland and the European Union. Jobs in Switzerland are open to workers from EU and EFTA countries. Many less qualified foreign workers take jobs in construction or hotels and restaurants, or as farmhands in agriculture. Others are highly trained, working for instance in hospitals or IT. About a fifth of foreign workers do not live in Switzerland, but commute across the border from Italy, France, Germany or Austria every day. Since January 2020, applicants for certain work permits in Switzerland have had to prove their proficiency in one of the national languages. The stability of the Swiss workforce is largely due to the country's vocational education and training system. Two-thirds of all young people coming out of compulsory education in Switzerland enrol in vocational training. This gives them a solid foundation in a certain occupation. It results in one of the lowest youth unemployment rates in Europe. What kind of jobs are young people preparing for? The International Labour Organization is warning of unprecedented transformational change in the workplace. This is called Industry 4.0, the current trend of automation and data exchange in manufacturing technologies. It's driven by new technologies such as artificial intelligence and robotics. Robots can't just barge in and expect the same wages, holidays and pensions as Swiss people, but they'd be welcome to join us for our 9am coffee break.